Three, two, one. Hello and welcome Lockdown Defenders. This is Coach Mike and today we are breaking down a skill that doesn't get enough attention. Rebounding. And the mastermind of rebounding himself, Dennis Rodman. From the basics all the way to the most advanced techniques that made an undersized Dennis Rodman one of the greatest rebounders of all time. Oh man, oh man, what a defensive play. Tremendous defense. Wow. Oh. We have a lot to cover, including some very unorthodox techniques, but Rodman never neglected the basics either. Boxing out was still a staple of his rebounding prowess. Making contact, sealing position, and sitting on the legs of the offensive player to gain leverage, driving them back or holding them off. You can see in this play, Rodman creates contact sitting on the legs of the offensive player to hold them off and get in between him and the basket. Especially important when battling some bigger, stronger players. Another benefit from boxing out and getting legal position is you can get the offense in trouble by getting an over the back offensive foul. Watch again in this play as Rodman gets position, even though the offense jumped much higher, the ref was on Rodman's side. Another important technique within the box out is an arm bar, a way to create contact and also hold off leverage. And boxing out can also be used on the offensive glass as well, driving out and sealing position. But what made Rodman impossible to seal off was that he was constantly on the move. Watch how he constantly moves before the shot, repositioning himself to different areas, most of the time trying to be opposite of the shot. This play starts with him on the right offensive block, but as his teammate starts to drive towards him, he circle cuts underneath the basket to get to the other side of the layup attempt. And this makes sense because most misses bounce to the opposite side. But that's not the only spot he likes to get. In his early years, he loved to get to the front of the rim whenever possible. This allowed him the most options to get any short rebound no matter what side it bounced to. It also gave him the most options when crashing from the perimeter, being able to watch the shot attempt and time his jump properly. This also gave him options to use his supreme athleticism in his early days to track down rebounds. But probably most important was it allowed him to gobble up all easy rebounds when the other team wasn't even crashing. And if you want to be great at something, you need to thrive off the easy ones just as much as the hard ones. However, later in his career, Rodman preferred to use the anchoring technique. But before I get to my favorite Rodman technique, I have to mention the lockdown book, because if you like this breakdown, you'll love the book, jam-packed with everything to become a lockdown defender. Or check out the website for other products and our daily blog. Now, back to the worm. The anchoring technique is one of my favorites. It's when Rodman would box in his opponent to secure the entire weak side for himself. Watch again as he tries to push in as far under the basket as he can his opponent and leave the entire weak side to himself. And you can see him anchoring even before the shot goes up. And that's why this was one of Rodman's most common tactics. He could do it off the ball and no matter where the rebound went, he could disengage and go get it on the weak side. He also loved to bury up to secure this anchor, going from the baseline side and driving his opponent up out of position on the weak side. In fact, Rodman would even let some opponents get by him if it meant he could secure the weak side to himself. But for an undersized player when it came to guarding centers and bigs, the anchoring technique gave him a secure area to not only tip the ball, but go track it down. And so now we dive into some of his more unorthodox techniques and ideas. Because of that anchored space, it allowed Rodman to tip the ball back to himself and then pursue it. You can see in this play, he gets the anchored space, but when they go up for a rebound, it's even. Neither player can secure it. And so he's just going to tip that ball several times until it gets into that space where he can track it down. And of course, if he has position, he would tip the ball in front of him so he could secure it himself as well. But I don't think we've appreciated the true beauty of this technique. Look at this play where the rebound is headed way over the basket rebounders, 
all the way to the elbow. Yet Rodman is elevating like a shot blocker just to get a hand on it, just to tip it up to remain in the area. He uses his incredible second jump ability to tip it again out of the traffic and then two more times to keep it from the opponent. Here's another multi-tip play and you can just see the soft hands he has and how he can control it to himself. And if we haven't already broken all fundamentals to rebounding, here's another. Rodman loved to rebound with one hand. But rebounding with one hand had its advantages. It extended his reach. And when Rodman was only 6'7", rebounding in a league dominated by 7-footer, 7'2", 7'1", 6'10", you can see why he needed those extra inches. He also needed every advantage he could get, including being a little dirty, and rebounding with one hand freed his other hand up to do anything. But he wasn't just going up with one hand just to go up with one hand. He was going up to snatch it into two, into a chin or chest position to secure it. It always looked like he was attacking the ball. And of course, he understood when two hands were necessary, especially in heavy traffic with a lot of bodies. Because if he could get two hands on it, he would obviously prefer that. It gave him a lot of strength to get through all those arms when you're trying to rebound. Just watch in these next two plays how aggressive he secures that rebound with two hands and rips it away from any opponent nearby. And of course, keeping it away from opponents could also mean keeping it high away from any pesky guards, and of course if he could get two hands on it, that would always be one hand rebounders. But what truly separates Dennis Robin from every other rebounder, he treated it like an art form. He studied it, practiced it, appreciated it, to the point where he was breaking down opponents and where their shots went the most when they missed how their spin affected the rebounding, the trajectory. And if you want to hear the audio of this clip, if you haven't seen it before, it will be on my Twitter account in the link to this video. But in these clips, if it looks like he's reacting before anyone else and anticipating and knowing where the rebound's going, it's because he was. And on top of everything we've already discussed, he was probably the only player that could make an ordinary rebound look so entertaining. And that passion, that love, that flair has made him one of the best rebounders in NBA history. His techniques might not have been fundamental, but maybe that's why he was so great. And maybe rebounding needs its own revolution. Because playing great defense and forcing a miss is nothing without that rebound. I'm Coach Mike with Lockdown Defense. Keep up the hard work.